Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 48. And today we're returning with two more big games with our Canaries in the post-core era. I suppose is a good way of putting it. As we take on Fulham away and Brentford at home right after what was a crazy January transfer window. And of course, normally at this point I'd say, let me show you what's been going on off camera. But uh, as you know, you saw the infuriating 2-2 draw against Chelsea in the last episode. Do apologise a little bit for the rage to the end of that game but I think you can forgive me uh, after Basia's comically bad own goal and right now as you can see 14 games remaining in the Premier League season we are currently sitting in ninth place and we are what sorry two points off of Bournemouth in seventh and three off West Brom in sixth we are now six points clear of Southampton in tenth place so I don't think the Saints or anyone below them are going to catch up for a, a race for Europe in the end of the season I think now it's going to be I think Spurs will pull away I think it's going to be West Brom Bournemouth, Man City and Norwich. These four teams battling for the final two European spots. So yeah, first game today is indeed going to be against Fulham away at Craven Cottage. We're after a crazy change to our team in the January transfer window and some Wonder Kids. Well, maybe Wonder Kids signing in the January window as well. We've had a change in our dynamic screen, as you can see. Uh, Brewster is a team leader alongside Godfrey and Farinez as our three team leaders now. You see the social groups are now split into four as well. There's going to be a lack of cohesion in this team with so many new faces and so many departures. But if we are to stay in a European place, we need to sort those issues out and get back to winning ways here. So into the game, as you can see right now on the injury report, just Madhu is uh, a little bit injured, for, a little bit injured, a little bit tired for this game. And uh, Koulibaly, as we know, is away in Africa, right? Now, Rose is quite unfit, but everyone else is fine. There is a lack of match sharpness right now, as I haven't been playing these guys in the under-23 games like I ordinarily would. So, once again, we're going to stick with a 5-2-1-2, uh, tiki-taka style of play. We used this against Chelsea, and I thought we played well. So, this will be our lineup. Farina is in goal. About five is Sanabria, Godfrey, Akoaku, and Basia with Ahrens. Longstaff and Mountain through the middle with Provenzano further, and Vasilic and Ida up top together. On the bench, Zangarandi, Jones, Madu, Madison, Dembele, Jokic, and Abby as well and in fact let's put Brewster on the bench for Madu as he's carrying a slight knock and I never like to risk it with those sort of players so first game it's Fulham away need to win to keep ourselves in the race for Europe come on you Canaries a starlight coming to the Canaries as well with Mason Mount playing it across to Longstaff and as Matty finds Provenzano Ida controls and Vasilic to Sanabria as Jonathan who's been amongst the goals of late as his shot well saved by Rodak and cleared by Fulham still 0-0 18 minutes in good to get the first shot on target though Defence has not been an issue for us this season. It's scoring goals. Our top scorer is Adam Ida, and he's only got seven all season long. Embarrassing as Matty Longstaff chips it to Sanabria, and this guy continues to get into the opposition area. Good save by Rodak. Still one, uh, sorry, still nil nil, but should have made it one nil there. Chances falling to the wrong man, really, as Fulham look to get themselves in front against the run of play. Keen controls and shoots and puts it wide of the post. Do see someone scoring in this one? Fulham right now in the relegation zone. They need wins, not draws. And the same can be said for us. A draw does neither team a favour. But we've had seven shots, five of which have been on target. Haven't completely been battered in the possession battle. With West Brom in front against Bournemouth right now. I'm going to say to the boys here, you've been unlucky so far. Uh, although I will say to the defence, you can improve. Same with the midfield. And I'll individually criticise the attack as well. 45 minutes to go. And again, these, these sort of results are Spurs and I in front away against Brentford. They're not going to get us into the Europe places, no way. Now picks up the loose ball and finds Max Ahrens as we look for the first chance of the second half here. Max steps in field and finds Sanabria. He's involved in the action so much today. And oh, Jonathan Sanabria. This guy keeps coming forward and he scored once again. Norwich in front. It's the wingbacks that combine for the goal. Max to Jonathan and the Argentine gets his second goal in two. And after a man in a match display against Chelsea, he's showing everyone why he's the perfect replacement for Jamal Lewis. Norwich in front. And now we've got to hold on. Been so disappointed with Provenzano this season. He just isn't doing enough for me. And I was so excited for the little Italian. But unfortunately, haven't really seen him do anything this year. He, he scored a wonderful free kick for his first goal at a club against Wickham Wanderers in the Carabao Cup. And I believe he set one up in that game as well. But other than that, he's done literally nothing all season long. Such a shame. He gets a lot of game time, but doesn't really do enough when on the pitch. Anyway, 22 minutes to go. And this will be a big three points here if we can hold on to it. Matty Longstaff to Ida. And out wide is Aaron's. Yes, he's found him. Well done, Max. On the ball. Back to Mason Mount. On the edge. Oh, off the post. And Michael Keane clears. Come on. 
Seven minutes on the clock here. I tell you what, I'm so nervous. I'm so no Oh god, Max, what are you doing? After the last episode, man, I'm never gonna trust a back pass ever again. Madison, controls. You know, another golden chance goes begging. We just can't finish. Almost there, lads, almost there. Please don't throw it away. Let's take off Ida for Abby for a big lad up top for the final few minutes. We are so close to a return to winning ways, and I think that's going to do it as our former player, Bushiri, equalised for the Cherries at the Baggies, and that will do it. A return to winning ways, and once again, it's how we get our wins. Grind out defensive displays. Big three points. Has that put us into the top seven as well? I think it might have done. Because West Brom and Bournemouth drew. So yeah, there we are. I can see it there. Seventh place in the Premier League. We cut the gap on West Brom to one point, And we now overtake Bournemouth on goal difference. However, Man City do have a game in hand. I believe that will be coming tomorrow. And if they win that... Oh, they're home to Everton. They'll definitely win that. They'll jump over us and head into seventh. So it is so tight in the race for European football, man. It Honestly, it could be any of these four teams getting these two spots. It could be any of them. Jonathan Sanabria, though, I must say, I'm so impressed by this young Argentine. Again, this is why I was okay cashing in on Jamal Lewis, because I like Jamal. I really liked his stats, but this guy has got such a high ceiling. Only 21 years old, though, he turned 22 in a couple of months. His determination's gone up, you know, I love that. Physically, he's really, really quick with great stamina and actual fitness, just like Lewis had, and technically as well, really good in going forward and pretty solid at the back as well. This kid's got a very, very high ceiling, and Chelsea just slipped up a away against Brighton as well so well done the Seagulls and that means now do we have a game in hand on them no we don't that was their game in hand so the gap between us and fourth place is now six points for Sia god if we didn't score that own goal in the last episode and, and get that win there we would have cut the gap well we would be in sixth and we would have cut the gap on Chelsea to four points now just a, a case of what could have been come on Everton do us a favor there away at the Etihad I'd love to see them take points off Man City, and they didn't. <laughs> City get the win by two goals to nil, and that means now we drop back down to eighth place. We have picked our form up a little bit. You know, we've been unbeaten in our last six games, but uh, we need to score more goals. 33 and 25 really isn't enough, but to be fair, a lot of teams this season have had the same problem. Nobody's really scoring goals this year. Oh, a couple of injuries as well right before our second and final game today. we just seen Akua Kua has gone down and now Matty Longstaff has sprained his wrist as well. So frustrating. Oh, now Bruce has gone down. How many injuries has Rian had this season? Another one. I was going to play him in the Brentford game as well. This is crazy. Look at that. Four injuries in midweek here. Rian Brewster, Matty Longstaff, Samuel Madu. And a coup, a coup as well. All getting injured in the space of a couple of days. That is such bad luck. So second and final game of today's episode as we're at home to struggling Brentford. Chelsea were the early kickoff today and beat West Ham by three goals to nil. So they now extend the gap in the race for fourth place. But the Baggies are away at the Toffees today. Tough test for them at Goodison Park. And Spurs and Man City play each other. So a huge chance for us with the easiest fixture of the lot to get a big victory here and possibly move back in to the top seven. So head into the game due to a bit of an injury crisis due to a crazy midweek. This will be our team for the game. We're now going to switch to a 4-4-2 diamond narrow because we're now missing a coup a coup and that means that Provenzano will sit in a deeper role today and this is our lineup. Freen is in goal. That man at the moment right now, Santa Bria, Godfrey, Basir and Aaron's is the back four. Provenzano, O'Connor making his debut, the German slash Irish midfielder alongside Mason Mount with Madison further forward and up top due to the injury to Brewster, Abby is going to partner Ida. On the bench, Zangarandi, Phil Jones, Curtis Jones, Benali, Jokic, Dembele, and Vasilic as well. Very strange lineup, but kind of forced into it due to the injuries. Come on, you Canaries. Giving Curtis Jones the number 17 as well. Emi Buendia's old number. I said he does remind me a little bit of Emi Buendia. So um, hopefully a bit of Buendia magic if he comes off the bench today. Come on, lads, I've got faith in you. I've got faith in you. I've got faith in this young Norwich team. I've got no idea what will happen at the end of the season if we do make Europe. I, I still don't think it will happen because it's, it's just so tight right now. And I believe with a really young team, we will start slipping up at some point again. But you never know, man. You never know. So first highlight coming to the Bs. This is not what we want to see with Diego Linares down the left-hand side. Tackled by Mount, though. He wins it back for us. And Mason is going to sprint down the byline all by himself. He'll need some help, though, as he'll cross. Yes! 
About bloody time we score from across, Ida makes it 1-0. It's pathetic that he's our top scorer with only eight in all competitions. But you know what? Whilst goals are in short supply, you've got to take every one as they come. Great cross by Mason and Adam with the finish. Norwich in front, perfect start. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do if we end up making Europe. I'd love to lead this really youthful Norwich team into, well, hopefully, touch with the Europa League. But um, I just don't know as Madison delivers a free kick and, oh, it's two! Adam Hyde gets his second, but I think it's going to be disallowed for offside. The lines was not moving and, yeah, it's, it's chalked off via the VAR. Look good from crosses and set pieces, though, today. Finally giving teams to taste their own medicine. Getting dominated in possession, and I never like to see that. However, we are leading by a goal as we head into the break. 45 minutes away from back-to-back -back victories. We've got to guard against complacency now. Don't think the job is done. Don't think the job is done, lads. Let's get a second. Let's let's put the cow amongst the pigeons. I so badly want to qualify for Europe. I really, really do. Without our stars, with a young Norwich team. Abby! 2-0! Now the shoe's on the other foot. It doesn't feel nice, does it? It doesn't feel nice, AI teams. Now we're doing to you what you've been doing to us throughout all these years. Abby makes it two from the corner. And with 24 minutes to go, as things stand, we're going to jump up to sixth place. Now, Man City, West Brom and Bournemouth will still have games in hand. It's Kevin O'Connor on his tail. Sorry, Stephen O'Connor. Stephen, what a goal. Oh my god, 3-0 Norwich, Santa Bria back at it again, but Stephen O'Connor, who we signed from Leipzig on deadline day, the big German slash Irish midfielder, has made it free. This youthful Norwich team getting it done. We're not going to make it 4, are we? We're not going to make it 4-0 today, are we? Max down the right has beaten his man. And it is 4 <laughs> Abby's second, extraordinary. This new look, youthful Norwich team are going to make it seven games in a row without defeat and collect a massive victory at home to Bournemouth that will put us in to a European place. What a performance. And I'll tell you what, if we do make Europe, I've got one heck of a dilemma. Would we stay with this really young team? Or would we leave as planned? Madison's corner, a free kick, sorry, and Abby couldn't squeeze it in for his hat-trick. What a game! I'm so happy O'Connor got a goal, man. He was my favourite signing of the five we made in the January window. I just, I love his stats, and if he develops a technical game, he'll be a really good player in the future with great mental and physical stats. So that will do it then. Final score at Cow Road, Norwich City 4, Brentford 0, and the young Canaries are chirping as a unit. Absolutely amazing, and I'll say I'm very pleased with the result and your performance. Another clean sheet in the books as well. We are watertight at the back, and now, as you can see, Abby lifts us in to the Europa League reckoning. I love it. And to end today's episode off as well, we will finish the fixtures for the day with Everton playing West Brom and Spurs playing Man City, where... It's 6.30, we're not getting any goal updates there. I think one more continue will uh, we'll do it for us. And hopefully, we'll see the Toffees take points off the baggies. Oh, I just saw it there, but West Brom did win, unfortunately, in that game. As for Man City, they were thrashed by Spurs 3-0, which, in a way, I'm, I'm kind of pleased to see, because I want to see Spurs sort of pull away a little bit, and there just be these two European places left. I'd rather have that, to be honest, because that means that now, Man City have had a loss to their name, and with 12 games to go, have a worse goal difference record than us, and a two points behind as well. So, 12 games to go. Norwich City are in a European place, but for how much longer? I'm buzzing with those back-to-back -back wins there. And I must say, I'm very, very happy with the new boys coming in as well. But that was this episode of the Football Manager series, guys. A big thank you for watching. We really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, please do drop a like. Um, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. This is going to be quite a difficult one because I don't know what to come back with next. What I want to do is have episode number 50 as the, the season finale. Like the thank you special will be a season finale. And I want to play like the remaining three games as a group, especially that final day away at the Etihad Stadium. So that means we've only got one more episode to do. I'll try and squeeze in three games though, and I think we could possibly do like a midway through March to early April time. So maybe West Ham away, Spurs at home, and Brighton away as a treble header perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But have a great day, Rego, guys. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the next episode in the Football Manager series very soon.